Okay, Ruby, please now try to answer this one. But before that, we have here the different uh, vocabulary. We have the cottage, pilot, scissors, waitress. Okay. So wait for a while. So we have four. Can you see what is on the picture? Okay, the cottage is like this. Oh, it's cottage in, in USA, in America, but in the Philippines, it's not cottage, it's a house. Pilot, which I don't, uh, there's a picture here. So, scissor, and we have the waitress. Okay. So, in here, Ruby, this please try to listen and answer. The kitchen floor, because it's really dirty. One. What did the thieves steal? What exactly is missing, sir? I thought the thieves had taken the television set because it wasn't in its usual place in the dining room. Then I went to check my CD player and CDs. Uh, I keep them on an antique chest of drawers. All the CDs were on the floor with the CD player, but the chest had completely disappeared. It wasn't in the garden either, which is where I found the television. Right, sir. Well, can you give me a detailed description of it? Now listen again. What exactly is missing, sir? 
I thought the thieves had taken the television set because it wasn't in its usual place in the dining room. Then I went to check my CD player and CDs. Uh, I keep them on an antique chest of drawers. All the CDs were on the floor with the CD player, but the chest had completely disappeared. It wasn't in the garden either, which is where I found the television. Right, sir. Well, can you give me a detailed description of it? Two. What present will they take? We ought to take a present if we're staying for the weekend. Let's get something a bit different. People always take flowers and it's rather hot for chocolates. What about something for the children, like a DVD? Or some unbreakable glasses they can all use outside or on picnics? Good idea. And let's get a jug to go with them. The children have probably got lots of DVDs. Now listen again. We ought to take a present if we're staying for the weekend. Let's get something a bit different. People always take flowers and it's rather hot for chocolates. What about something for the children, like a DVD? Or some unbreakable glasses they can all use outside or on picnics? Good idea. And let's get a jug to go with them. The children have probably got lots of DVDs. Three. What will the woman eat tonight? Hotel York. Hello. I'm staying in your hotel tonight and I'm arriving quite late, about 10.30. Will there be any food available in the hotel? I'm afraid the restaurant closes at 10 o'clock. But the bar does burgers and chips until midnight. And there's always the pizza place opposite, which stays open late. Or we can bring sandwiches to your room, if you prefer. Fine. I won't want to eat burgers or pizza at that time of night. Now listen again. Hotel York. Hello. I'm staying in your hotel tonight and I'm arriving quite late, about 10.30. Will there be any food available in the hotel? I'm afraid the restaurant closes at 10 o'clock, but the bar does burgers and chips until midnight. And there's always the pizza place opposite, which stays open late. Or we can bring sandwiches to your room, if you prefer. Fine. I won't want to eat burgers or pizza at that time of night. Four. How much will the girl's ticket cost? I'm travelling from Banbury to Whitney tomorrow and I need to be there about ten in the morning. Can you tell me when the trains leave and how much a single ticket is? The 8.35 train gets in at 9.40. That's £12.65 for a single. The train after that leaves at 9.10 and arrives at 10.15. That costs less because you're travelling after nine. The fare is £10.45. I'll take the second train. Just after ten is fine. Thanks. Now listen again. I'm travelling from Banbury to Whitney tomorrow, and I need to be there about ten in the morning. Can you tell me when the trains leave and how much a single ticket is? The 8.35 train gets in at 9.40. That's £12.65 for a single. The train after that leaves at 9.10 and arrives at 10.15. That costs less because you're travelling after nine. The fare is £10.45. I'll take the second train. Just after ten is fine. Thanks. Five. What is the grandmother's job now? My grandmother always wanted to be a teacher when she was a little girl, but she had to leave school when she was 14 
and help her mother clean offices and shops. When she was in her thirties, she went to college, but she had to work as a waitress in the evenings to pay for her studies. A few years later, she finally got the job she'd always wanted, and she's done it ever since. Now listen again. My grandmother always wanted to be a teacher when she was a little girl, but she had to leave school when she was 14 and help her mother clean offices and shops. When she was in her 30s, she went to college, but she had to work as a waitress in the evenings to pay for her studies. A few years later, she finally got the job she'd always wanted, and she's done it ever since. Six. Which button has the boy lost? I've lost a button on my favourite shirt. I could see that it was loose when I put it on last night. If it was the one on my pocket, you wouldn't notice. But on the collar, it's different. It's easy to see that it's missing from there. Why don't you take one off your sleeve and use that? Here, you'll need some scissors. Be careful you don't cut the material. OK. Will you sew it on for me? Do it yourself. It's easy. Now listen again. I've lost a button on my favourite shirt. Okay, so we'll be done. Okay, so what is the answer for number one, Ruby? Did you hear it? Okay, number one. What did the thieves steal? It is? I could see that it was loose when I put it on last night. If it was the one on my pocket. Okay, Ruby, are you done or you want to listen it again? When I mean finish. You wouldn't notice, but on the collar it's different. It's easy to see that it's missing from there. Why don't you take one off your sleeve and use that? Here, you'll need some scissors. Be careful you don't cut the material. OK. Will you sew it on for me? Do it yourself. It's easy. Seven. What will the man do first? Before we start painting, I'll wash the kitchen floor because it's really dirty. It'll be easier if you sweep it before you do that, Nick. I'll carry on cleaning the windows. OK, and then we can start painting the walls. Now listen again. Before we start painting, I'll wash the kitchen floor because it's really dirty. It'll be easier if you sweep it before you do that, Nick. I'll carry on cleaning the windows. OK, and then we can start painting the walls. That is the end of part one. OK. What is the answer for number one, Ruby?
Uh, my answer number one. I don't know. Okay, I don't know. Okay, <laughs> letter A. Number two. What present will they take? What present will we take? It's letter, oh, I will be the one, letter A. Three, what will the woman eat tonight? What will the woman eat tonight? Letter C, Ruby. And for how much will the girl's ticket cost? How much? Did you listen this, Ruby, or no? Okay, anyway, teacher will be the one to answer. Oh, I am the one asking the question, and I am also the one answering the question. Five, what is grandmother's job now? Teacher, a waiter um, or cashier? What do you think? I don't know. Okay. Again? Okay. Next, which button has the boy lost? Okay. It's somewhere in the pocket. It's in the hand or it's in the neck. What? It's letter A. And seven, what will the man do first? What will the man do first? Okay, it's letter A. Okay, let's move to the next Ruby. Please listen Ruby girl. Okay, you will hear Sarah Brown talking about her work as a television weather forecaster. So it means she will going to talk about the weather. Okay, what's the weather for today? What's the weather yesterday? Okay, please listen. Now turn to part two, questions eight to 13. You will hear Sarah Brown talking about her work as a television weather forecaster. For each question, Put a tick in the correct box. You now have 45 seconds to look at the questions for part two. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Hello, I'm Sarah Brown, and I'm here to tell you about my job as a weather forecaster. I've been a weather forecaster for a television company for seven years, and two years ago, I became the head of the weather department. Now I divide my time equally between presenting weather forecasting on television and managing the weather department, which has a staff of 11. At 30 years old, I'm the youngest ever head of weather and the first woman to do the job. Since our news and weather service goes out all round the world, we all take turns to work at night. 
I prefer that to doing the show when I have to get up at four in the morning. I normally work an eight-hour day, and in that time I do ten or twelve forecasts. Before doing a weather forecast, I study data on the computer. This is the information I use in my forecasts. There isn't much time to learn what I have to say, but fortunately I've never forgotten my words, so I don't get nervous. My husband and I try to have the same free days, but neither of us has a regular pattern of work. He's a pilot on long-distance flights, so although he works hard, he has a lot more time at home than I do. We moved to our present house about a year ago, and he's enjoying painting it. I took up flying as a hobby five years ago. I hope to get my pilot's license this year, but because of the job, I haven't been to the flying school for ages. For exercise, I swim and ski, and I like running. I'm really proud of myself for running in the London Marathon. It's a 40-kilometer race, and I never thought I could manage it. My husband plays tennis, and we sometimes play together. But he's better than me, so I never win. Because I'm on World News, people sometimes recognize me in really distant places. Once in an Indian village, an old man took me to have my photo taken with all his family. I get some lovely letters. One person wrote to say that my smile made her feel happy all day. People occasionally even write and ask me to marry them. Now listen again. Hello, I'm Sarah Brown, and I'm here to tell you about my job as a weather forecaster. I've been a weather forecaster for a television company for seven years, and two years ago I became the head of the weather department. Now I divide my time equally between presenting weather forecasting on television and managing the weather department, which has a staff of eleven. At thirty years old, I'm the youngest ever head of weather, and the first woman to do the job. Since our news and weather service goes out all round the world, we all take turns to work at night. I prefer that to doing the show when I have to get up at four in the morning. I normally work an eight-hour day, and in that time I do ten or twelve forecasts. Before doing a weather forecast, I study data on the computer. This is the information I use in my forecasts. There isn't much time to learn what I have to say, but fortunately I've never forgotten my words, so I don't get nervous. My husband and I try to have the same free days. But neither of us has a regular pattern of work. He's a pilot on long-distance flights, so although he works hard, he has a lot more time at home than I do. We moved to our present house about a year ago, and he's enjoying painting it. I took up flying as a hobby five years ago. I hope to get my pilot's license this year, but because of the job, I haven't been to the flying school for ages. For exercise, I swim and ski, and I like running. I'm really proud of myself for running in the London Marathon. It's a forty-kilometer race, and I never thought I could manage it. My husband plays tennis, and we sometimes play together. But he's better than me, so I never win. Because I'm on World News, people sometimes recognize me in really distant places. Once in an Indian village. An old man took me to have my photo taken with all his family. I get some lovely letters. One person wrote to say that my smile made her feel happy all day. People occasionally even write and ask me to marry them. That is the end of part two. Okay, Ruby, you've got the answer now. Did you yes. hear it? Okay, number eight. How long has Sarah worked as a weather forecaster? Maybe seven years. Seven years, teacher. Okay, very good. Okay, next one. 
So, what does Sarah say about her job? Is a uh, she sometimes has to work at night? Okay, she sometimes has to work at night. And then, when Sarah does a weather forecast, when? When Sarah does the weather forecast, when? When A, B, or C? C. Okay, when she prepares it in advance. 11. Sarah's husband blank. Where? Sarah's husband, where, works on the same days each week, wants to move near his work, or spends a lot of time traveling. Do you think? Um, B? Okay. Letter C, you have to spend a lot of time traveling. 12, Sarah is pleased because she blanked. What is it? Okay. It's letter C, took part in a long race, 13. A man in India wanted what? A man in India wanted what? It is what? A, B, or C? It's letter B. Wanted a photo of Sarah. Okay, very good. Okay, let's move to the next one. Okay, so here you've got here, you will hear a radio talk about holidays in North Cumberland. For each question, fill in the missing information. Go. Now turn to part three, questions 14 to 19. You will hear a radio talk about holidays in Northumberland. For each question, fill in the missing information in the numbered space. You now have 20 seconds to look at part 3. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Good morning. This morning on holiday time, I want to tell you about the cycling trip I took recently to Northumberland in the north of England. Before I went, I read a book by Peter Green, whose title is Cycling Around Northumberland, which I found really useful when planning my route. Northumberland is a beautiful area of England and perfect for cycling. There is very little traffic on the roads and plenty to see and do. For example, why not visit a castle? More of them are open to the public here than in any other part of the country. While I was there, I actually stayed in a flat in a castle. But there are many hotels, cottages or bed and breakfast places to choose from. In the summer, it is important to book in advance, but I recommend going in the spring, as it is not so difficult to find somewhere to stay at that time of the year. You will find that some places are closed in winter. Most of the small towns in the area have cycling centres where you can hire a bicycle. A week's hire will cost £35, two weeks will be £55. There is also a deposit of £50, which you get back when you return the bicycle. Try to plan your holiday when there is a local event or festival happening. I went in June and was lucky enough to go to a festival of local food. Every August, 
there's an international festival of music, but you'll find something going on in almost every month of the year. Ring the Northumberland National Park if you're interested in finding out about their activities. They have a programme of guided walks, photography and bird watching. Ring them on 880046. No listen again. Good morning. This morning on holiday time, I want to tell you about the cycling trip I took recently to Northumberland in the north of England. Before I went, I read a book by Peter Green, whose title is Cycling Around Northumberland, which I found really useful when planning my route. Northumberland is a beautiful area of England and perfect for cycling. There is very little traffic on the roads and plenty to see and do. For example, why not visit a castle? More of them are open to the public here than in any other part of the country. While I was there, I actually stayed in a flat in a castle, but there are many hotels, cottages or bed and breakfast places to choose from. In the summer, it is important to book in advance, but I recommend going in the spring, as it is not so difficult to find somewhere to stay at that time of the year. You will find that some places are closed in winter. Most of the small towns in the area have cycling centres where you can hire a bicycle. A week's hire will cost £35, two weeks will be £55. There is also a deposit of £50 which you get back when you return the bicycle. Try to plan your holiday when there is a local event or festival happening. I went in June and was lucky enough to go to a festival of local food. Every August there's an international festival of music, but you'll find something going on in almost every month of the year. Ring the Northumberland National Park if you're interested in finding out about their activities. They have a programme of guided walks, photography and bird watching. Ring them on 880046. That is the end of part three. Here, Ruby, we have here the holidays in North Cumberland. Useful information, we have to read Patrick Green's book called Cycling that's around North Cumberland. Okay, the place is not quite familiar. Probably it's somewhere in North America. So lots of things to see. For example, what? What do you think, Ruby? Answer for number 15. Ruby, did you hear teacher? Yes. Okay, what's the answer for 15? 15. Nope. What's the answer? Do you have an no. answer? <laughs> no. I don't have an answer. Okay, you have or no? Okay, the answer is a lot of things to see, example, for example, the castles. Okay, next, accommodation in flats. Okay, flats in the Philippines, it's condo. In the Philippines, we call it flats. Actually, flats, that's in Europe, that's in British, it's flat. So, actually, nowadays, in the Philippines, we use, uh, we use the word condo, like condominium, some kind of flat. But other, but later, we, we already have the studio type flat like that in Manila in the central, in the capital of the Philippines, we have flat like studio type flat. Okay, mostly the one who stay in the flat are those people who can afford like the celebrity like that. They can't go because flat in Manila, the term flat is quite expensive. So best time to go there is what? What do you think? It is this spring. 
In springtime, yes. The bike to hire, one week that 35 pounds, two weeks, how much? 55. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. That's 55, so it's quite cheaper because if you got two weeks, I've got one week 35 times two, that would be 70 pounds. So in here, if you're going to rent for two weeks, it's only 55. So you've got 15 pounds less. Okay. Local events, June, you've got the food festival. August, you've got the international festival of what? Mm, it's music. Okay, it's music. And the national park activities, it's guided walk. And another photography. Yes, that's it. So one, two, three. Oh, you've got three correct answers. Okay, let's move to the next. You put yes or no. Now turn to part four. Questions 20 to 25. Look at the six sentences for this part. You will hear a conversation between a girl called Julia and her father about choosing a course at university. Decide if each sentence is correct or incorrect. If it is correct, put a tick in the box under A for yes. If it is not correct, put a tick in the box under B for no. You now have 20 seconds to look at the questions for part four. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. So you had better decide which university course you're going to do, Julia. You really can't delay this much longer. But I'm in no hurry, Dad. It's ages before I have to decide. The main problem is that I know I'd really love to do business studies, but a lot of my friends say it sounds so boring, especially my friend Anna. What's she going to study? Film studies. It does look exciting in comparison. I can see that business studies might sound dull to your friends, Julia, but you know that's far from the truth. I know. And don't forget that with business knowledge, you might find it much easier to get a job at the end of your degree. I'm sure your friend Anna will enjoy doing film studies, and if she's lucky, she'll get a job she enjoys. But there aren't many jobs in the film industry. So, if I were her, I'd look for a different course. You're probably right, but it is what Anna wants to do. Oh, I find it really difficult to decide. You don't think that business studies will be a bit too hard for me, do you? <laughs> of course not. And did I tell you, Jim Brooks said he'd employ me in their accounts department in the summer holidays if I chose business. I told him I really liked working with numbers, and of course I always got good marks in maths at school not like French, which I never did well in. Well, what about considering economics? That might interest you more, and you might find a job working for an international bank or something. I'd never have thought of that, Dad. No one at college has ever suggested economics. I'll go and look up some information on the internet right away. You're such a help. Thanks. Now listen again. So, you had better decide which university course you're going to do, Julia. You really can't delay this much longer. But I'm in no hurry, Dad. It's ages before I have to decide. The main problem is that I know I'd really love to do business studies, but a lot of my friends say it sounds so boring, especially my friend Anna. What's she going to study? Film studies. 
It does look exciting in comparison. I can see that business studies might sound dull to your friends, Julia, but you know that's far from the truth. I know. And don't forget that with business knowledge, you might find it much easier to get a job at the end of your degree. I'm sure your friend Anna will enjoy doing film studies, and if she's lucky, she'll get a job she enjoys. But there aren't many jobs in the film industry. So if I were her, I'd look for a different course. You're probably right. But it is what Anna wants to do. Oh, I find it really difficult to decide. You don't think that business studies will be a bit too hard for me, do you? <laughs> of course not. And did I tell you? Jim Brooks said he'd employ me in their accounts department in the summer holidays if I chose business. I told him I really liked working with numbers. And of course I always got good marks in maths at school. Not like French, which I never did well in. Well... What about considering economics? That might interest you more, and you might find a job working for an international bank or something. I'd never have thought of that, Dad. No one at college has ever suggested economics. I'll go and look up some information on the internet right away. You're such a help. Thanks. That is the end of part four. You Thanks now have me. six minutes to... Please check number 20. What is your answer for number 20? Mm, is uh, A? Oh, letter A, teacher. Oh, it's letter B. Julia's father thinks that studying business may be boring. What's the answer? Twenty one. What's the answer? Mm, it's uh, A. Mm. Letter A, teacher. Oh, B again. Three. Julia's father believes Julia's friend is making the wrong choice. I think is it true? Ruby? Oh, it's yes. I'm 23. Okay, Julia's father thinks again that she might find studying business too difficult for Julia. Yes, I know. What's the answer? Yes or no? What do you think? Is, is a yes? It's a yes, teacher. Oh, next, Julia is confident about her. Oh, Julia is confident about her math. It is? A. And Julia is keen to consider her father's suggestion? Of course, yes, as always, because Julia respected her father. That's why he always consider, she always rather considered her father's suggestion. Okay. So, Ruby, we don't have enough time because teacher, okay, show me your face. Oh. Uh, Thank you so much for today, Ruby. And I will just wait for whatever your mom's okay communication with Pantado. Okay. So I hope yes. you're gonna enroll again and you will have to stay with teacher Anne. Okay, I will miss you and then probably we're gonna see next month. Okay. Okay. Okay, bye bye. Okay, don't forget to chat with teacher in the Zala. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. Goodbye.